Hi, Buddy Lindsay here from GoJango.com. Wanted to talk to you today about doing weird stuff in Django. And I want to talk to you about it in the context of learning Django better. Over the weekend, I was working on an application that I'm calling Digital Picture Frame on my GitHub at github.com slash Buddy Lindsay if you want to take a look. And in there, it's, it's basically an application I'm writing in PyQt5 and so that I can create a digital picture frame on kind of any computer I run this application on, specifically on the Raspberry Pi. Well, in order to be able to better manage the data that's going to be on there, I wanted to create kind of an embedded web server that runs inside of the PyQt5 application. I wanted to be able to, you know, hit the IP address of the uh, Raspberry Pi on the network and browse the website and be able to upload data uh, to the Raspberry Pi via the web interface. Well, being a Django developer, I wanted to be able to do that with Django. And so I spent some time and I figured out how to run uh, on a separate thread, a basic Django web server. And it was really interesting. And I learned a number of things about how the run server management command actually works and gets WSGI server running. And it's something that I've always just, it's kind of everything has just worked and I've never had to dig into how it works. And it was, it was fun. It was a good learning experience. I learned a few things and I realized that when I've done interesting and weird things with Django is when I learned the most. So at work, we created an offline application using PySide and Qt4 and we are all Django developers. We've never built an offline client, a, you know, that is going to intermittently connect to the internet and download data. And so we were like, Hey, let's use Django for all of our data stuff because we're used to Django, Django migrations are great. We knew that was gonna be a thing as dealing with databases. And so we started dealing with uh, using Django as our kind of our database layer. And we learned a lot of interesting quirks about Django in the process. Um, and another time I created an application and uh, this is before I understood about Django storages. And uh, I uploaded data directly from my computer onto the web server, it kept the data in memory, and, and then uploaded it to an S3 bucket. Learned more about how Django worked there. And I, I've also thought of other ideas that kind of go outside the bounds of kind of default Django that have been some interesting projects. One of them is overriding the kind of the SMTP uh, module that is used for sending uh, email backends. Uh, the SMTP email backend, I thought about overriding it and writing my own backend that um, sends out emails, except it kind of does it through uh, a Celery task. And every time I hit to send an email, it sends it off to a Celery queue. And that Celery queue is what sends out the email and then does other stuff like, you know, saving the uh, email to the database so that it can be reviewed later. Uh, and, you know, and I, I thought that would kind of be an interesting way to do emails. And I've always wanted to experiment with doing that and that would help me learn more about email backends. Another project that I've kind of wanted to do is, uh, again with email, is I wanted to be able to use the a custom email backend that you know called out to a third-party API service that I write, and then that API service kind of talks back and forth with, uh, with, the Jang with Django, and specifically the Django admin, because this particular thing would be for developers to review old emails that have been sent, but it sends it off to a, a custom service that we write. And I've kind of poked around at looking at doing that. I haven't had a use case specifically for it, but I learned more about the email backend when I was doing that. There's There's been a number of other interesting, weird things that I've done with Django, and I found that when I do those things that are odd and interesting, that I learn more about Django. And so I want to encourage everyone to look for interesting solutions to problems and they don't necessarily have to make it to production, but kind of it's a different way to go about uh, doing something in Django because you're gonna learn a lot more about, about the internals of Django. Uh, and one of the things on this digital picture frame is I need to dig into more about how media files are stored and served up from the application so that I can actually show the images that are on the server, but I don't necessarily wanna save them to a model in the database, which is the Thing that I'm used to using more is referencing data from a model. I'm going to use the media stuff and anyway, I just need to dig into it and understand uh, how to do that specifically in, in my scenario.
And that's just going to be more I'm going to dig into Django and learn more about it. So I just want to really encourage everyone to, to come up with odd ideas and odd things you can do with Django and then try to do them and, uh, and see what you learn. And if you've ever done something odd and interesting out of the normal default way of doing stuff with Django, please leave a comment and let me know what you've done. I'd be really fascinated to hear what everyone out there has done. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want more in the future, please feel free to subscribe. And as always, if you uh, want to know more information or you have any questions, please leave a comment or you can send me an email. I want to thank you for watching today and join us next time. Have a great day.